How's it going, everybody? My name is Stefan. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read the description of this channel, uh, my intention is to just go over different problems uh, related to downstream bioprocessing. Um, so I can go over like how I've solved them or how others have solved them. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the optimization of a uh, TFF step that includes dye filtration, um, you know, by, by finding the optimal concentration to perform that dye filtration. So I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you know something um, about uh, TFF. Uh, if you don't, feel free to just leave a comment and, and you know, ask and I'll, I'll um, answer my, your question to the best of my ability. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to just assume that you, you know about TFF if you're watching this. So uh, as you probably know, you know, you're, uh, when, when you're doing a, um, you know, TFF step that includes concentration and dye filtration, as you uh, concentrate, so your concentration is going up, which means that your volume in the retentate tank is going down and your flux is also going down as that concentration increases. Um, if you have a lower concentration, that means you have more volume in your retentate tank and your flux is higher. So between these two like states here, there exists some volume at which you would do your constant, your, your dye filtration. There's a volume at which you would do your, your dye filtration where your flux is high. So it goes quickly, but your volume is not too much so that you're not uh, requiring too much dye filtration buffer. And of course your retentate volume is dictated by your, your concentration or rather your concentration is dictated by your, your uh, retentate volume. So your concentration in the retentate is equal to the mass of your product or solute of interest um, over the volume in the retentate. And, you know, we're also, I guess, assuming here that your sieving or your passage of your solute through the membrane is zero, nothing passes through. And that allows this M naught to stay constant. So, to find this concentration at which we're, we're at the highest flux possible and the lowest uh, volume possible to you know, optimize the area uh, and time required. So this equation, go over here. We're trying to minimize the area of the filter required and the time for the unit operation required uh, by finding a optimal dye filtration concentration. So um, yeah, let's get started. We have our area of the filter and the time of the unit operation is equal to the volume V over the flux J. Um, v we can get from rearranging this equation here, okay? So we'll have, if you know, if we just move the V over and then the CR, we'll have that V is equal to M naught over CR. And then the flux J uh, can be described by film theory, which says K, the mass transfer co uh, coefficient times the natural log of C gel, CG over the retentate concentration. C, CG or C gel is the concentration at which the flux through the filter is zero. You can imagine, you know, C gel, your protein or solute of interest becomes so concentrated that it's now essentially uh, a gel. It becomes gelatinous and, and there's no more volume. There's no more liquid passing through your filter. So that is CG. Okay. So we have this expression now, the area of your filter times the time for the unit operation is equal to 
the volume, which can be written as the, the mass of your solute of interest over its concentration, divided by uh, the flux um, as described by film theory. Um, so now a little throwback to calculus. How do we find uh, the, the minimum or maximum of this equation? Well, we're going to take the derivative with respect to the retentate concentration. So, um, yeah. Uh, let me rewrite this. We're going to have the derivative of the area of time with respect to the retentate concentration is equal to, now I'm gonna plot these constants, M naught and K. So we're gonna have M naught over K, the mass transfer coefficient. And that's gonna be times the derivative with respect to the concentration of, now we're gonna have one over CR divided by the natural log of C gel and the retentate concentration. Okay, now to, to solve this derivative, um, you know, we will use the quotient rule, which says if you, I'm gonna write it over here, take the derivative of f of x over g of x, that should be equal to g times the derivative of f minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna circle this in, oh, black, I guess. Uh, let's just get it in red. This is the quotient rule that we're gonna use to solve this derivative. Switch back to black and let's get started here. So we're going to have M naught over K times. Now F is in our uh, numerator. What's the derivative of one over CR? Well, it's going to be minus one over CR squared times G, which is in the denominator, which is the natural log of CG over C R. And that's going to be minus now the derivative of uh, C, or excuse me, the derivative of G, um, which requires a little chain rule. So um, the derivative of the natural log of CG over C R is going to be C R over C G. And then the derivative of the inside will be C G, excuse me, minus C G over C R squared. And then that's all times F, the numerator, which is just one over C R. And then all of this is over G squared. So the natural log CG over CR squared, close that. Okay, so now we can simplify this equation um, starting with this in yellow over here on the left. Let me just get that two in there. That, so we're simplifying this first. Okay, um, so I'll write the M naught over K. Um, <clears throat> so we have uh, minus one over CR squared. And then of course we have natural log CG over CR in the top and then that squared in the bottom. So that those will cancel and we can have natural log of CG 
over CR. And then this is all, um, yeah, so that's subtracted by, excuse me, let's just, let me just circle this. So now we're gonna simplify this part here. Do that in blue, not black. So we can see, now we're simplifying that part. So we have the, the minus CR over CG and minus CG over CR squared. That's gonna become a plus and we can cancel out some stuff here. So this CR, we can say is gonna cancel that CR, the CG is gonna cancel with that CG. And we're left with one over CR squared times the natural log of CG over CR squared. Terrible squared, there we go. Okay, now um, remember we have to set the derivative equal to zero to find the minimum or maximum. In this case, we're talking about a minimum. Um, and here now we just have some algebra. So this term is gonna go away. We're gonna be left with uh, one over, let me see if I can, can I? Oh, sweet, I can copy some of this. Nice, okay. So yeah, all right, so that was awesome. Um, sweet discovery. Okay, so we're essentially, what we're doing here is we're moving this term in red over to the other side. And then that's gonna be equal to, I'm gonna just copy and paste this. That's gonna be equal to this term here. The one up on top, okay. So we moved this term over and now we have the one over CR squared times the natural log of CG over CR is equal to one over CR squared times the natural log of CG over uh, CR. And, excuse me, I forgot the two squared. You can see, we'll just go back here. This has got the squared, this one doesn't. Um, these CR squareds will cancel. And, um, you know, this term will cancel. So what we're gonna be left with is one is equal to one over the natural log of CG over CR. And then, you know, uh, just rearranging things here, we have the natural log of CG over CR is equal to one. Um, exponentiate both sides and we'll have CG over CR is equal to E, rearranging. We find finally that the retentate concentration, the optimal retentate concentration is equal to CG, C gel over E. Um, maybe I circle this in red so we know that this is our, our answer. So, and, and this is gonna be universal. So your optimal retentate concentration will always be equal to the gel concentration over E. This is the concentration that you should perform your dye filtration step because it will minimize the amount of filter area uh, and time to achieve uh, that those those uh, that number of dye volumes specified. CR the retentate concentration should equal the gel concentration over E. Okay, so now I'm going to um, share. Uh, 
I'm going to share Excel. Okay, so now what, what does this actually mean? C, your, your concentration, your optimal dye filtration concentration is equal to um, the retentate concentration. All right, what am I saying? Your optimal retentate concentration for dye filtration is equal to the gel concentration divided by E. And what does that mean? So I, I've given you some, some, uh, some data here. What I have is some concentrations um, and the flux associated with each concentration, okay? That's this data here. Essentially what I've done is I've taken the natural log of those concentrations and plotted against flux. That's what you can see in this plot here. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I fit a line to this data and I, I got negative, uh, this, this expression here, I'm not going to read that to you, this expression and the R squared is pretty good. So what does this tell us? Well, you can, you can, um, you know, think about your, let me just go back actually to the whiteboard really quick. When you're fitting this data, uh, let me get my, hmm. Okay, so I'm doing it a little different last time. Okay, so we have our, this is your uh, film theory expression for flux, right? So you can rewrite this, right, as K times the natural log of CG, and that's going to be minus K times your natural log of CR. Okay, so this right here, this is your B. This, the K is your M, and the natural log of CR is your X, okay? All right, so let's go back now to Excel. Okay. So we fit, uh, you know, we, we, we get, we do linear regression and get the best fit. And we know K is equal to the slope 11.41. And then, um, the, then K times the natural log of C gel is equal to this intercept. So you, you can solve for C gel. I have the expression right there. and you get 47.63 is C gel. That would be the concentration at which your product becomes gelatinous um, and you have no more flux through the filter. And then of course the optimal C to perform dye filtration is uh, the C gel divided by E, which gives you 17.58 approximately. I just, if we look at the expression here, I just used 2.71, close enough. Okay, so now, we can come over here. And what I have done here is I've said we have, you know, if we're performing six dye volumes, we have 500 grams of our protein or solute of interest. And I have two different filter areas here, 1.2 meters squared and 3.6. For, um, I have, what do I have? Six different concentrations at which to perform, perform dye filtration. Um, Given our M naught, I've calculated what the volume would be if we were at that particular concentration. So if the concentration was one mg per mil, we'd be at 500, which makes sense, right? Because we have 500 grams to start with um, and so on. That, that same um, calculation is done for each dye filtration concentration. Then I used our 
uh, equation for flux as described by film theory to calculate the predicted flux in this column. And then uh, taking the total volume to be processed, which would be our number of dye volumes times the amount of volume in the retentate divided by our predicted flux, I could calculate this time area requirement. That's the time area required to complete this process. And if I were to divide the time area by an area, I'd get the predicted time. So we have two different time columns here. This first one corresponds to area one of 1.2 meters squared. And this second one corresponds to area two of 3.6 meters squared. You know, plotting this below, you can see that there is uh, a clear minimum here. You know, the, the time required for the process decreases as we increase the concentration of dye filtration to this 17.58, and then it increases from there. And then you'll notice that these blue dots, uh, they correspond to area one, the smaller area, and then the orange ones to area two. So the, we have more filter area um, for a given flux. That's a higher flow rate. We can process more volume, um, leading to a shorter uh, processing time. So uh, yeah, with all of that said, um, you know, I, I hope this was helpful on um, why, uh, you know, the, the result C gel over E is equal to the optimum dye filtration concentration. Um, I'll also just apologize for the uh, trashy quality of the video. It's my first one and I've just been kind of freestyling here. Hopefully they get better as I do more videos. I'll definitely have more videos on TFF. Um, I'm going to have another on um, optimization of a... Uh, of the time area requirement for a TFF step. Um, but I'm going to include the, uh, you know, concentration parts um, of the equation. You, you know, you get similar results. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot more to come, but, you know, bear with me as I, as I figure this out. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment. I'll, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And Really, as we move forward here, I'm just hoping that we can learn together. I mean, if there's something I screwed up here, you know, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm happy to, to, to talk about bioprocessing with all of you. So thanks.